Scott, and welcome to North American Egg Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak, and I'm so excited to talk to our guest today. He's working with leading edge technology, dreaming up unbelievable ideas and turning them into reality. He's invented a zero emission, fully autonomous tractor. From Palo Alto, California, I'd like to welcome the CEO of Z Tractor, Bakur Kavezarelli. Welcome, Bakur. How are you today? Thank you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Um, so you're an ex-diesel and hydraulics technician. So how did you make this decision to become an inventor and entrepreneur? What's what's your background? Uh, I I was working for different uh, companies in the agricultural sector, from growing the crops in the field to I don't know the processing and the food trading, uh, and uh, knowing. Uh, about the tractors or traditional tractors and the challenges that technologists are facing or limitations that diesel and hydraulic and uh, other technologies used on a tractor are having. Uh, we were just trying to find the solution for one of the farmers in the US who can start electrification of their machinery or reducing their carbon emissions. Uh, by, by implementing electric vehicles or electric machinery. And that's how it all started. And then we decided to build a small prototype then a little bit bigger and then to, to the tractor size, which is still, we have still a small size compact tractor, but uh, at the same time, it's already electric and autonomous and it can do every task you can imagine with the category zero and category one implements. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. And so what was the point where, um, when you were working, uh, in your previous career where you just were like, okay, now is the time, this is when I need to do this. Uh, so my previous startup was connecting us growers, the specialty crop growers with the wholesale buyers overseas mm -hmm. and, uh, mostly in Europe, Eastern Europe. And we saw the shift from the retailers requesting or asking if there is any chance to get the products from the farms which have the CO2 reduction plan on a farm level implemented or they are in the process of implementing it. Mm -hmm. They seen the retailers, the groceries basically seen this as an opportunity to pay premium for the products or farmers who are doing this. Uh, and uh, that's how we were thinking what is the cheapest way to achieve that in the farm and what's the first steps the farmer can do in the farm to start reducing the emissions. And I think uh, machinery is one of the fastest, probably also like most affordable way to do this, but it's definitely the fastest step in terms of uh, getting the plan on a farm level, let's say five-year plan on reducing emissions, right? Right, yeah. So what crops is this used for? Uh, when we were talking, that was about the dry beans, like pinto and red kidney beans. And, uh, but, but then we, see, we, we saw that for vegetables, which we had no experience on working with, well, like trading them. But then we talked with the farmers, we saw that there's even bigger need uh, for vegetable growers. Right, cool. And so why are autonomous tractors so important today? Uh, of course, the, the autonomous tractors are not that, uh, sometimes they are considered as the uh, kind of that there is no operator, there is no human operator needed for that. It's, it's not like that. There is uh, the switch in terms of like how many tractors and how many acreage one operator can do, right? And with this all uh, labor force shortage in agriculture, that's in, in some cases, it's just enabler to continue farming the specific crop in a specific region uh, with, uh, with uh, today's uh, requirements for a crop or the standard or maybe some practice, which is organic farming practice or no tilling practice or some other practices where you need different approach from the machinery perspective. And uh, I believe that uh, in many in many cases, this automation in general, 
will save the, uh, the type of farms we are farming today from changing the crop or reducing the size of farm because of the labor force shortage or uh, some aspects related to that. Right, yeah. So you've got um, three different models, the Bear Cub, Mars, and Super Pilot. So what's the difference between those models? Uh, the main difference is the size, but mm -hmm. there are some like functions and features which we are trying to add to Mars, which is not available at the moment. We are working, still working on it to make it uh, uh, fit the needs where we want it to go in terms of the crops and the size of farms, while per cup is more for the uh, small farmers or medium-sized farmers and with the vegetables, berries, uh, and the crops mostly um, like which are, uh, which we have tried so far is like vegetables, berries, and grapes, right? Mm -hmm. And there are some orchards which we did with the young trees, like uh, uh, orchard nurseries, but also the young trees, like and before four or five years, where we had some great uh, uh, success. And uh, I think that Mars model will be more for the bigger farmers in grains, like mm -hmm. this first model, which will start with a relevant small fields of the grains, but already in the grains. And the super pilot is probably uh, mostly for grain growers. Wow. And so uh, talking on the autonomous side, how does Z-Tractor know where to go? Uh, you have the tablet as an operator in your hand and you tell Z-Tractor where you want it to operate as a boundaries. You set up the boundaries and then you choose the pattern, which pattern you want it to follow. And wow. then you, you, it follows that pattern. If, and if it sees any obstacle, uh, as the safety is our priority, it just stops and gets the operator to resolve the, like connect and see what are the obstacles and resolve the issue. If that it's is remarkable. An obstacle, the pet or the wild animal is crossing in the field. Uh, then you need the operator's involvement. Right. That's so cool. So are you seeing, or what are you seeing as the efficiency difference between tractors with drivers versus driver less? You know, is, are you getting better efficiency without the driver? There are like pros and cons on that. That's not mm -hmm. all positive. Obviously, there is a big advantage in the uh, gaps and overlaps in planting or any other tasks because mm -hmm. the you can have better map of your uh, better map and plan where you want to, for example, put the seeds and uh, measure the distance between seeds, which is done by implement, but also with uh, interaction with the power unit, which is tractor in our case. And, uh, and for example, in the task where you need like uh, precision uh, or uh, land leveling, like laser land leveling, mm -hmm. that's there, that where you need to have uh, calculation and the previous data. That's mm -hmm. where I think that autonomous is much better and showing better results. There are tasks like putting, for example, drip irrigation uh, pipe, uh, where the so far, at least from our experience, the driver based tractors, like traditional tractors with a traditional implement are doing the better job. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are working on this as well. And it's, uh, it's possible to get the to get to the required standards on that, uh, on that task as well. Uh, yeah, I think the speed overall that the driverless has a better speed. Right. Uh, there's no brakes, obviously, and uh, it can work uh, longer hours, but also the uh, per acre time per acre spend it on doing the task. Uh, it's if when we are talking about like soil preparation, crop management or weed management tasks where we have uh, where we master and work, right? We don't go beyond that with our tractors. We don't we are not in harvesting or anything. Right. Uh, after after you basically grow the crop. 
Oh, that's cool. And so what kind of horsepower are you offering? Uh, so horsepower, it's a great question. So we, we uh, try not to compare it with uh, horsepower and go like horsepower to horsepower because I mean, for electric, it's a wrong metric, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what we are uh, promising in the powers on a, from a power perspective, it works with the implements of the category one, category two, different mm -hmm. width. And uh, it's equivalent to probably uh, 20, between 20, 25 kilowatts uh, of uh, you know, depending on uh, uh, configuration and uh, like trim, but the, that's that's how we measure it by kilowatts. We go by kilowatts. Of course, of course, you can convert it in horsepower and see what horsepower is equivalent to this. But we try not to market it as a horsepower uh, power unit. Right, and I understand that there's no hydraulics, and why is that? No, no hydraulics because one hydraulics are basically not that efficient like the electric, uh, like in using the battery power, mm -hmm. first reason. Uh, but there is a second reason, which is hydraulics still require the oil and it can still, the pipe can break and leak. So we try to not to use any of the oil products on our tractor. Wow. And with it being electric, how long does it take to charge and how does the charging work? Uh, the charging is the regular car charger as we, I think they call, uh, the most common name for this charger is a level two charger, okay. <laughs> which is the vehicle charger and it can be charged uh, from three to four hours and work from eight to 12 hours, depending on the wow. soil and the implement. So that's, that's with the uh, one pack, you have the option to double size your pack and increase the size of the pack on your tractor if you custom build it on our website. And in this case, you can extend it work up like by another five hours, probably get really? to 17 wow. hours. Oh, that's cool. And uh, what about PTO and three point hitch? Are they compatible? Yep, they are coming with the PTO. It's PTO is optional. You can add or you can have it or not, depending what are your tasks and what you want to uh, work with, but it, it doesn't come with the base model, but you can add PTO as the option. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, three point each comes with the base model and that's that's already there. Great. And so what do you think is the, the biggest benefit to farmers here? I think saving time and cost optimization on produce, like pr production cost optimization. And of course, in some cases where they are direct suppliers to the groceries mm -hmm. and depending which grocery of course but if you are direct supplier to the uh, grocery stores or chain then potentially premium on your growth for zero emission farming right yeah yeah that's a good point and what about pricing what are what are the price ranges so the the uh, average price because you have an option to add different type of uh, track belt or uh, other features and accessories. So average price for the uh, bear cup model is forty two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And uh, if you want to add uh, some soil sampler and some more like lab uh, features to it, including the data processing and gathering the computer vision or other features mm -hmm. it can you can add these features like feature by feature and then there are also like uh, other products which are software to improve its performance or it's very narrow niche for specific crop specific task then you can add also these features depending on what's the interest but i think uh, the the forty two thousand dollars are Good estimate for an average price for the bear cup model and we don't have prices for the next two models so far it's they're not available for the sales at the moment they're still on the concept level oh great and then so when when do you, when are you projecting that they'd be available uh for pre-orders the march will be available this year but mm -hmm. we will deliver first uh, unit to the customers of our second model next year spring of next year nice, while nice. the first model will be delivered to customers this year 
Oh, great. Awesome. And then how do you want people to get a hold of you if they have more questions? Where can they go? Our website or um, like there's an info at the tractor email on our website and phone number. So the best way to reach out is uh, that or the social media. Great. And that's ztractor.com, right? Yes. ztractor.com. Awesome. So um, one more question for you. What fires you up? What makes you get out of bed in the morning? Uh, great question. We think that this is the uh, this is the must happen kind of transition from the diesel and driver tractor to driverless electric. Mm -hmm. And the faster we make it, the better we will be ready for the challenges we, we are facing in agriculture, like to produce more food with less chemicals, less water on a smaller land with uh, like unexpected or very unpredictable weather conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, we need better planning, which means we need more data. And, uh, and this is the perfect solution for that. Well, that's awesome. So thank you so much for joining me today. And thanks to everybody who's watching. If you want to learn more, the links are, will all be below in the show notes. So have a thanks great so day. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good day.